live from the City of Angels here on a Wednesday night. We have not had a Wednesday night show in like a year. It's been a long time. We haven't had two movies open on the same night, big movies. I mean, relatively big movies in forever. So I figured we'd do a stream tonight. This is our box office preview. Traditionally, we do it on a Thursday because it's Valentine's Day. By the way, happy Valentine's Day to you. We're going to do it tonight because we have two movies, Madam Web and One Love. And we are really going to dive, deep dive. Are you ready to talk about Madam Web? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this may be the worst CBM ever made. That is the question I pose to you here tonight as we go live coast to coast. I'm telling you, I just got out of this film. I had heard it was bad. But this is a saving grace for us. If you like to go see a film that has so many goddamn issues with it, I'm talking about so many things wrong with it, but yet you still get to bask in its awfulness. Get ready for Madam Webb. This is my reaction tweet from moments ago outside the eight in the mall, the AMC 8 here in Burbank. You should be thanking the high heavens. Madam Webb is not a Warner Brothers film because they would Batgirl it. You'd never get to bask in its awfulness. Schizophrenically directed action sequences. I'm talking gray man shit. <laughs> oh, my God. That gray man is one of the best streams that I have ever done. If you haven't had an opportunity to go back and watch my live, extremely animated, visceral reaction to the god-awful gray man, and that was the moment that my relationship with Netflix was severed, and since then, I have only piled on. We have an... It's absolutely... There's no way. There's no way to ever correct the relationship that we have because I've destroyed them repeatedly because they suck ass. Back to Madam Webb. When you're comparing a movie to The Gray Man, we have problems. This director, it's a first-time director. It's a female. It doesn't matter. Guys, it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's a woman. It doesn't matter, right? Give me a thumbs up. That's, before anyone says one word, I'm not savaging the direction because it's a woman. That's not what's happening. I'm savaging it because it's terrible. It's schizophrenic. Every time we get to an action sequence... It is as unwatchable as you can imagine. As we decide to take different edits from all different angles and then rack zoom. Okay, so I used to be in TV news and I would shoot stuff. I was a sports guy and I'd go out with the camera and I'd shoot high school football. And when I shot, you'd have the zoom on manual and you would rack it. So you'd have tight and you go boom like that, right? And it looked really cool. I mean, it looked way better than anyone else's stuff in the market. Like, this guy has got an eye. I could be a cinematographer. This cinematographer, though, every time it's like closer, closer, real quick. Right? I'm like, why are we doing? Why are we doing this over and over? And then you have terrible CGI. I mean, really, it's not even a whole lot of CGI. It's so chaotically edited that you can't even tell what's happening. Okay. So you have this direction that easily stands out as bad, especially the action sequences. And then you have this issue with ADR. Now, if you don't know what ADR is, let me tell you. Have you ever seen Doolittle? If you haven't seen Doolittle with Robert Downey Jr., there is no finer example than that film of what bad ADR and just ADR in general is. It is when an actor delivers the line organically within the scene, and for whatever reason, it didn't work out. So the voice didn't work. It didn't get captured. The accent was off. Whatever the reason was, we are going to strip out the audio that was organic in the shot, and we are going to add it in in post-production with a guy in the studio going like this. Hey, come over here. I want to see you. You're going to add that in on top of the visual, right, and mesh it, and then it will look terrible. The bad dude in this film, the villain in this film, I got to get him up right here. I got to look and see what this guy's name is. I don't know if I've ever seen him. It's one of the worst performances I've ever seen in a movie. That's how bad. And every one of his lines is ADR because whatever he was doing, I don't know if you couldn't understand him because I think he's a Hispanic actor. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I just know that every one of his lines 
is ADR. Done in post-production. Here it is. He was in, oh shit, he was in a movie that I saw called The Mauritanian. How many of you saw that? Raise your hand if you saw The Mauritanian. Everyone, right? There's probably five of us with our hands up. There we go. We saw it. Jodie Foster. They thought it would be an awards film. I saw it and I'm like, this is not an awards film. I had to tell them as one of the first people to see it. And I go, this is going nowhere. This film is dead. Tahar Rahim. This guy's terrible in this movie. Can I? I got to make it bigger. We need to make fun of Tahar because it's one of the worst performances that you'll ever see. And again, all of the lines are dubbed in post, so it makes it doubly bad. So it's bad acting and then ADR. Okay. So beyond that, he's terrible. The girls in the film are fine. So you've got, let me just go over the story quickly because I, I really do want you to see the movie. I had a quick reaction video. You can go check it out after the stream's over. It's like a minute and a half. Gets to the hits, runs, and errors of what we just talked about here on the stream. But I, I can't go without discussing this film. There's no way I could not come on here and do a stream because this film is colossally horrible. And the fact that, again, you have a chance to uh, opportunity to see this thing is, is a blessing. You must see it because you're going to see how not to make a movie. Okay, so here it is. So you guys know it's Marvel tangentially. I mean, it is a Marvel character. It's Sony Marvel. But you've got Dakota Johnson as Madam Web, and her mom goes to Peru to get a magical elixir from a spider, the venom of a spider, that will help her live because apparently the baby's going to die. So the mom has to go to Peru to find the venom that will help her unborn daughter die. It's kind of like strange things. Only they don't take the daughter's unborn, the, the mom's unborn daughter's brain and implant it in the mom's head. And then she becomes Madam Webb and then has sex with guys as a toddler. So it's not like that. It's not, it's not that kind of movie. That's poor things. This is the mom dies. I don't guys, the movie's terrible. I'm going to ruin it. Screw you guys. Last time I did one of these streams, when I talked about poor things and I said, it's terrible. I, out of the goodness of my heart, didn't ruin the film because I didn't want to. And then everyone's like, you didn't say anything about the movie. You didn't tell me why it's terrible. Well, that's because I saw it three weeks before it opened. I didn't want to ruin it, even though I should have that night. So, Dakota Johnson becomes, 30 years later, after mom is croaked, she gets shot by the bad guy. Dakota Johnson discovers her powers of the spider people. Dakota Johnson, and we're going to talk, we're going further. I'm just going to lay this just bare skeletal outline of the film out. Dakota Johnson is fine in certain roles. In Fifty Shades of Grey, she's fine. The movie's terrible. God, that movie's bad. I never even saw the second or third. I think I watched some of the second one, and I'm not watching the, the... But she was actually the best part of the movie. Jamie Dornan's the one who's bad. He's terrible in that film. Bad acting. Not as bad as to hear here, but he's bad. But Dakota Johnson's limited, right? She just does the same thing over and over. And a lot of times, it's very underwhelming, the performance. She should be having fun with this. This should be a campy, fun film. And it's taken so seriously by everyone involved. But yet, you've got to hear ADRing his lines, terribly delivered. And then you have Dakota playing it serious. You've got the three girls, and one of them is Sydney Sweeney. She's the one I'm familiar with. The other one played Dora the Explorer, and the other one apparently was in Ghostbusters. They're fine. The girls are fine. Sydney Sweeney, can we just talk about her for a minute? Listen, I think she's she's got talent, but again, she's limited. She's an in-the-box actress, right? She can't do much beyond act a little bit aloof she was perfect for that hbo movie that i recommend you see where she plays the cia or she she worked for the cia and she was sneaking documents out she gets busted for you know breaking the uh, code she can't you know, breaking this stuff out so she's good in that because why because she's playing a version of herself Almost every actor is really good at playing a version of themselves, and that's what she is, so she's limited. So here she's doing the same thing we've seen do everywhere else. So it's not about the acting with the girls. They're fine. The screenplay's terrible. And the fact that Marvel said, go ahead and release this movie, is still 
completely and utterly bewildering to me. I can't believe they don't have a final veto to say this is never coming out because there's no way that we're ever going to get these characters continuing on in the MCU, even from Sony, right? This is worse. This is definitely worse than Morbius. It's laughably bad though okay it's one of these things that as i talk about this movie here tonight it's bad but i recommend it because you're going to laugh your ass off at, at a lot of the edits the adring and then the screenplay which features things like the girls getting up on a diner booth so they get on top of the table in the corner of a diner and they start dancing to britney spears toxic to a group of of young basketball players that are there in the diner at the same time. And she, <laughs> wait, I'm not done yet. Dakota Johnson has the ability in this film to live into the future. That's her thing, right? Madam Webb can see visions of the future and then act on it so it doesn't happen. So throughout the movie, we get to live a terrible scene seven times as she remembers it. There's a scene where she's performing CPR on a guy and then she sees other mayhem and it takes like 10 minutes and you have to sit through this god-awful film and you have to watch the same thing for like 15 minutes. Um, Back to the diner scene. They're dancing on the table. They're playing toxic. She realizes they're about ready to get killed by the spider dude to hear the terrible actor. And then he's also short, so he's not even good physically for the role. And then she has to race in her cab from the woods. Just trust me and go with me on this. From the woods, she has to get to the diner before spider bad dude venom guy kills the girls that are dancing on the table to toxic. And as the cab is driving, racing across the country roads to Britney Spears, toxic, this film (laughs) is toxic, toxically horrible. It's so awful, but yet I laugh so hard, particularly as we get close to the end, the final battle which features one of the biggest, most obnoxious commercial placements ever, right? When you have the product placement in a film, which in this film, Pepsi, she has a can, and at the end, they have a gigantic neon sign on top of a building that says Pepsi, and they're fighting, and Madam Web is battling out with Venom Dude, the terrible actor who ADR'd his lines, and then the Pepsi sign falls on top of them, She goes into the water and there's a giant P or was it an S? I don't, maybe, why is there an S? It's Pepsi sign. Was it the Pepsi is great? Whatever the S is, the S comes hurtling through the water, still somehow neon. How is that possible? She's in the water. How is the sign still neon? So many questions for this movie, guys. My head is starting to hurt having had to talk about this film and try to describe it to you. And I'm, I'm, I need to gather my thoughts because my brain's about ready to explode as I discuss the film. I will take questions now because I need a break having to think about Madam Webb. And I'm telling you, if you saw this tonight, you know damn well that it's one of the worst movies you've ever seen. And right up there with the one over my shoulder, Wonder Woman 84, worst comic book movie ever. They're right there. These are neck and neck. It literally took her longer to drive the cab to the diner than it did for her to run the first time. (laughs) Which worse, the Pepsi stuff or the taste the rainbow from Shazam? Man, that's a tough, that's a great question, Alex. Remember that from Shazam 2 where the girls like taste the rainbow and then five seconds later, no joke, like literally taste the rainbow, bitch. I'm like, you don't use the same joke twice. Who wrote this shit? The, no, it's worse. Shazam and Taste the Rainbow and Skittles worse, but the Pepsi. Poor Pepsi. They pay to be in this movie. <laughs> Can you imagine being the person who said yes to that? They're fired. They're gone. This movie, once you see the movie, it's over. The guy, whoever signed on to the deal to the product placement for Pepsi in this movie is fired. And I feel bad for anyone that was at the premiere the other night. Can you imagine being at the premiere of Madam Webb? 
and having to watch it and then afterwards get together for some kind of party afterwards and pretend the movie isn't shit. I couldn't. You guys know I couldn't. I'd be laughing. So let me just tell you what happens at the end because it's it's worth it. And then we'll go back and talk about more plot holes from the movie. At the end of the movie, it gets all serious. Madam Webb. And here's the three future web slinger girls. And they're going to go out and fight crime. We'll never see them again. But, according, you know, when they made the film, she's thinking, no, of course, we're going to have a sequel. You're never going to see them again. At the end, it goes. And then <laughs> this I started laughing. Thank God there were eight of us in the movie theater. They start playing Cranberry's Dreams. <laughs> out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, the end credit song is like, Oh, my dreams. Impossible to ignore. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I started, I started going, what? That's what I sounded like. It was insane. What is happening? This film was unbelievable. I'm telling you guys, I'm laughing because I had so much fun laughing at how horrible it was. I mean, this is, I'd rather sit through Madam Webb for 24 hours straight than have to watch Poor Things or Lisa Frankenstein or Argyle. This film, this film at least will make you laugh with the choices and then questions. If anyone saw this, can someone answer this for me? Dakota Johnson. So she apparently abducts the three girls And she's on the news. They're like, Dakota Johnson, she abducted these three teenage girls who in the future are going to present a problem to the Venom Spider guy. So he tries to kill them. So she tries to protect them. That's the whole movie. Okay. So if she's most wanted woman in New York City, right? She steals a cab with the three girls in the back. They all jump in and they drive off. She smashes into a car. The cab has a license plate. It has on the top, it's got the number of the cab. It's got a busted up front and no one sees the cab when they're like at the hotel or the, no one bothers to say, here's the cab. I think Dakota Johnson's here. She's driving the cab around for the entire movie, essentially. And then later when she, again, remember, she's the most wanted person in New York city. She first abducting the girls, right? Well, she somehow finds a way onto a plane to go to Peru. This is right after September 11th. The security at airports was insane. I mean, obviously it still is, but remember after September 11th, you couldn't do anything. You had to take everything off. You had to walk in naked. And then they, Dakota Johnson got on a plane to go to Peru, even though she was the most wanted per- This movie's terrible, that screenplay. What's happening here? Who said this was okay to make as a movie? Beantown Brandon, Sony should have sent it for a tax write-off. I promise you this, Warner Brothers would have. That's why tonight's stream is so essential that you spread to everybody. We need to make this movie a massive success because we need more terrible works of film like this Warner Brothers doesn't give them to us. Sony does. And for that, Sony, you are our studio of the week. That's our new prize we're going to start giving out. Because if you allow a film like this to see the light of day, you'll let anybody see anything. And for that, we salute you. Cheers, Sony, for Madam Web. You must see this movie. 100% better than Poor Things. It's not even close. I would 1,000% recommend this over Poor Things. This is an MCU. I know it's not Barry, but, but still, Kevin Feige had, they have to have something in the contract that Feige gets to see. Because I'm just saying, if they sent this to him, they'd be like, he, well, no, you, you can't, you can't, this can't be released. You, you, you can't, you can't release this movie. Like you just can't. And then it, it is. So I, I, Feige after this, Feige's going to definitely get final vote. He's got veto power because this is like, you talk about, thank God, Deadpool's up next. Because if Marvel's was next, I mean, Marvel's was, but imagine if Marvel's was after Madam Web. Because it's it's like, right, it's like another Marvel's. I got to say, though, I would rather watch Madam Web than the Marvel's. Because you'll laugh your ass off at Madam Web and how ridiculous it is. Marvel's is just embarrassingly bad, right? When they show up on the planet and they're all doing the dancing with the prince. What the fuck is that? terrible who writes this shit i'm 
So tired of these writers in Hollywood who have no talent. They're horrible. Then we have actors who are bad. We've got, who's good? Is there anybody who's good anymore at anything other than me? And it, and even that's debatable. That's very debatable. Gone Girl, I think we need to question Sydney Sweeney's acting. She's, she's, she's just the same thing, Gone Girl, and everything. Go watch the HBO movie where she plays the, the leaker of the documents, whatever the hell it's called. That movie is she's good because she is being herself. That is Sydney Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney, let's come on, guys. We know why she Sydney Sweeney's body is like a 50 out of 10. It's insane. Okay. No question. Like Sydney Sweeney, if you were like, this is what this is physically, you can't draw it up better. She's like AI drawn up. That's what that's why she's, you know, listen, she's got talent, but it's one of the reasons. Let's not be, let's not pretend that that's not one of the big reasons. Anytime you mention Sydney Sweeney, what do they say? The other day someone sent me a joke, which is come on, that's what people are thinking. I want to see this movie on the biggest screen for two reasons. Sydney Sweeney and those two reasons. Come on. We're not going to pretend that shit doesn't exist. It's stupid. You, uh, juvenile, Eric. It's reality. Sorry. Deal. But she's not going to give you something. She's almost like, okay, this is going to be mean, but I think it's fair. She almost is like a lazy-eyed actress. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like she's just not fully there. It's like she's just kind of under the... I've never seen Euphoria. I, I, I don't know if she plays drugged out or what. In everything I've seen her in, she's just kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm just... She's not energetic or peppy. She's just low-key. I don't think you're ever going to see her win an Oscar, okay? She was good in the movie, the HBO film, whatever it was called. Someone saved me with it, whatever it was called. But that was her playing herself. Madam Webb or Bo is Afraid. Madam Webb. I mean, Madam Webb, you have to see. Guys, listen, the reason we're here tonight is to tell you to go see the movie. We need to support this film. You're going to laugh. You're going to have fun with it. It's too long. It's ridiculous. Terrible acting. ADR. Schizophrenic directing. Dakota Johnson playing it way too serious. But you're going to laugh. You're going to see moments like the table dance with the toxic. And then there's another scene. Okay, so back to the I'm jumping all over. That's just what it is, dudes. I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. There's a scene where there's she's someone gets in a car accident. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, the car accident, it, it is what it is. And and she sees it ahead of time. So she tries to stop the guy from getting in the ambulance, getting the accident. Didn't happen. He he gets in the accident. She goes to help him. And he got in the accident, right? So this is how bad the film is. There's so many things that are now coming to me that were just so terrible. And he gets in the accident and he like hits, you know, he gets smashed from the side. So, okay. So he gets hit from the side. So he gets T-boned, right? So he goes this way. And for some reason, he's all bloody in his chest. I'm like, what happened? He got hit from the side. I don't, for what, his chest is all bloody, but it doesn't even look like blood. Sydney Sweeney has her hands up and it looks like they had Prego spaghetti sauce. <laughs> That's all. Hey, he ran out of the fake blood. She's like, oh my God, get this Prego with extra oregano off my hands. It's so bad. <laughs> oh my God, this movie's amazing. It's so deliciously terrible. That's what I want to be quoted for. <laughs> That's probably true. I didn't see it. On, listen, because our friend, listen real quickly, and we'll get to some other things, but I tell you what, I, I it probably did come down to that very fact that I did not see. Uh, guys, look, so this is Dave Morales. He's going to be our shill of the week coming up on Sunday for sure. Uh, Dave said that this is a thriller that must be seen on the biggest screen possible. <laughs> which is totally inaccurate but dave i this is probably what happened noah i only saw it on like a mid-size screen it wasn't imax it wasn't dolby it wasn't even prime it was like a mid-size it wasn't small it was like a mid-size screen if i would have seen it in imax i'll bet you i would have thought it was great oh god she's in craven the hunter here here's what i would do if, if i'm an actor and Sony comes to me and says, hey, I've got this MCU. I, <laughs> just as soon as they finish that, you go, I'm out. They, I don't care. Nope. Are we going to? Nope. Sony, MC. No. I'm sorry. You said Sony and MCU, right? That's a pass. That's a hard pass for me. I mean, it would just be over. 
did wait did did she did she did she really tell Nietzsche did she or Tonuchi Tonichi <laughs> uh good to see you again I wouldn't doubt it I mean why wouldn't you be when you watch the movie it's it's uh it's you would fire your agent. You'd fire everybody you, that you possibly know. Let's go back to the beginning. I see some super chats here. Thanks for being here on the Sunday. <laughs> see, I've lost what day it is. Valentine's Day. It's Wednesday. Uh, Sony should have shelved Batgirl this movie. Yeah, 100% damages the brand. It totally damages uh, Marvel. No question about it. And, and no question, Madam Webb. Yeah, I mean, it's not even up for debate. It's like, good Lord. I mean, uh, 100%. I think I already got to this one. Tax write off. Madam Webb over Bo is afraid. No question about it. Bring in the super chat if you want to. Oh, we're also going to talk about Fantastic Four. She did. She fired her agent. Listen, uh, it has to happen. I mean, when you watch the film, you you must fire everybody that told you to do this. And here's the reality, and I tell you this all the time. At, at some point, maybe I should just be an agent. I really mean this. I'm not even just saying this. I mean, I feel like I can do pretty much anything. But at the end of the day, what do I excel at? Number one thing is telling people cold, hard truths. And as an agent, that's what you have to do. You cannot say you were great in this. You were that. You have to be honest. You have to say, listen, I think you're talented, but this is not your best work. Uh, if I, if listen, if I was to hear after watching this, I'd say, dude, you need to pretend you weren't in the movie. Um, I, I know that you, you know actors' egos are fragile and all that shit. But I got news for you. This is so bad that you need to go into witness protection for a while. This is this is not going to be. Uh, and same for Dakota Johnson. And the reason she has to fire the agent and everybody is the fact that when you're in a film like this that is so toxically abysmal, um, you have to fire everybody because it does, you just damage the one thing you have, which is reputation. You know, and for an actor, that's everything. They're trying to get on to the next big thing. And Dakota Johnson, you know, she she was she just did that one movie that was what was the one from last year, uh, two years ago, the Apple movie where she played the mom, and she has the autistic kid. You know, whatever that was, she was on the verge of like kind of choosing peanut butter Falcon too, right? She was kind of like in that almost in that award space kind of thing, right? She's Hesperia. She did some cool things, and then she said yes to this. But you know, listen. Here's the here's the reality. As an actor, you're going to get that call, and you're going to go. They're just going to pitch it. Sony's going to pitch it as MCU, right? Even though it's not, right? But they're going to pitch it as MCU, and you, as an actor, are naturally going to say yes. You're going to absolutely what? M of course. But then you have to do the due diligence, and I think some of these actors don't really know. Let's be honest. A lot of these actors aren't fans of some of these franchises, they might not even know that much about the MCU. I'm not saying I do. That's why I don't do streams all day and all night talking about MCU. We'll talk about Fantastic Four casting here in a minute. But, you know, you don't see me talking about all this stuff that it's just nonstop CBM shit. I'm just talking about the fact that you have to know that Sony CBMs, that's a no. That's a hard pass. We're not interested. And the agent who wanted money, because I'm sure they got her like $10 million for this. I'm sure that was probably one of her biggest paydays. That is, that's why you can't... Listen, I've always... I talked about this so often on this stream, and I mean this. You cannot live your life for money. Now, I'm not suggesting... You need money. I need money. I got to pay for the roof over my head. I got to pay for the car. I got to pay for the gas. I got to have pay for my, for my kids, right? I got to have money to do these things, but... You don't want to be making decisions based solely on cash. And when someone floats, here's 10 million. Let's just say it was eight. Eight million for Madam Webb and her normal payday is four or five. She's like, eight million for how long? What's the shoot? Three months? I mean, but you got to remember, it's always important to remember this that yes, you might have that money, but if you destroy your brand, if you destroy your reputation in the process, the money's not worth it. So, you have to think that way. And that's why I always say, like, you know, eventually when we get a sponsor on here for whoever, I will never just accept a sponsor. It has to be somebody I believe in, like Diet Mountain Dew or Mountain or Mellow Yellow Zero. It's not going to be some, you know, random company. I'm, I, I just don't do that. I'm only into the things I'm into. Uh, and that's the only things I'd ever talk about. I forgot. Yeah, Cha Cha Real Smooth. 
I didn't think it was great, but she's she's. But again, remember Dakota Johnson is very limited. Just like Sydney Sweeney, they're almost the same actress in that in that manner, right? They have to do their thing. No matter what you give them, the line delivery is going to be the same for them. So you have to make sure the character is who they are. You cannot ask them to break outside of that very limited box that both of them are in. Because Dakota Johnson here has opportunities to kind of go nuts and have fun with this. And she still does that kind of laid back, lazy eye acting, right? That's what I'm going to call it now, where you're just not fully there. And and she needs to amp and thrust forward and she's pulling back or just neutral. And you can't ride this thing at neutral. you got to ride into it like almost like a crazy person, almost like Pedro Pascal did in Wonder Woman 84. I don't think it's a good performance. I think it's really weird. That whole movie's terrible and his performance doesn't work either. But at least he leaned into it. He didn't hold back. He didn't like have the brakes on. We talk about that all the time here on the stream. I very rarely even tap the brakes. That's why most of the times it's like almost schizophrenic here because I just roll. I don't think I don't. I mean, yes, a little bit, but not a lot. <laughs> Clearly you guys watch the streams, but you can't because if you have the safety brake engaged, you're going to hold yourself back. And we've said a lot of things on the stream. Most people never dream of saying, I'm going to get canceled. You just said a female director's bad. Who gives a shit? The direction is bad. I don't care if it's a woman direction's bad, period. End. Not discussing sex. Don't even bother. And the thing is, is when you don't thank you. Yes, it is. Good, good spot back there, by the way. Thank you. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me pull it up. Good spot. May, December's right. Do you see? This is excellent work by you, Harrison. Can I tell you to see that? I just put it up there the other day. So you just spotted it. It's such a bad movie, but I like the box. If, if the FYC covers good, it might be on the wall. Beantown, Brandon, again, huge. Thank you, sir. Wow, nice super chat. Thank you, Beantown. It's unfortunate that Isabella Merced was in the movie. She's the one who was also in Dora, correct? She's the Dora actress. She has several promising projects lined up, including Alien Romulus, Last of Us Season 2, and Superman Legacy. She's good. She is. I, 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 I No issues. Zero notes for her in this film. Well, obviously, the big one, don't be in the film. <laughs> that was a note she didn't listen to. But as far as what she does in the film, no problem. And also the actress that's in Ghostbusters, she's fine too. She's actually got spunk to her. I like it. So they're they're good. It's not that. Dakota Johnson isn't the right person for the role. She's not having enough fun in the direction. And then, of course, screenplay's abysmal. I mean, just truly, truly terrible. Uh, Sony Classics planning on an Oscar campaign for Dakota Johnson later this year in Daddio. Well, you know, listen, if that's the case in emotion, because uh, I, I haven't really looked into next year's Oscars yet. I'm going to get into that soon because we're almost up on this year's Oscars, and I like to have all of at least the pre-work done for next year by then. If that's the case, then they're going to have to pray this film disappears fast and disappears and gets memory hold because it's uh, it's bad. It's it's going to do major damage to her brand, and I can see why she fired her agent. It's funny. I did not know she did that. I can tell you, and you guys know I say this all the time for advice when I come out of a film and say you got to fire this person. I would say fire her entire management team. I said that about Emma Stone. I still think Poor Things is really an ab abhorrent film. I really do. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to at all waver from that. There's zero. I'm not ever going to waver from that. Uh, but the fact that she's getting all the plaudits uh, obviously is much better than where Dakota Johnson is in this film. I think that I still would have fired my agent for poor things, but remember, and, and remember I said this before and I'm going to say it again. And I think I'm going to bring this up now because it's remember I talk about it in the moment and I just go with what I feel. And I'm telling you, I am not comfortable with Emma Stone and Yorgos Lanthimos' relationship. Uh, I said this before with, I think there's a Sven Galley thing going on. I'm telling you, someone came in here with a comment, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it. They said it's well known in the industry that Emma Stone and Yorgos Lanthimos are or have been ro romantically linked for some time. I don't know if it's true. I can't speak to that. I'm only going to say this. Whenever I see them together, it is... It, there's, I'm telling you guys, you know when you see it, okay? You know it's like when we saw Sidney Sweeney and what's his ass, right? For anyone but you. When you have the two, there's a chemist. There's something weird, man. They're always, she's got, they're just like a, I'm telling you guys, I'm, I, I have a feeling I'm right on that. I'm usually right. Is There's something weird about it. There's 100% something weird about that whole thing. I know she's married. I know she just had a kid. I get it. 
No, I'm. But listen, guys, you, are we going to pretend that that's like the first time that's ever happened? Like that's never happened. That someone has been romantically linked with someone soon after a baby. Soon, after, of course, happens all the time. Whether uh, either way, husbands cheat on their wives like like during pregnancy. I'm just. T- I don't know what to tell you if it's true or not. I'm just going to tell you. Whenever I see the two of them together, if I were the husband, I'd be like, "This ain't right." I, I, that's all I got to tell you. That's I would be like, "This ain't happening, man." You're not this. I'm not comfortable with this. And thank you, Alex. It's not a good film. It's 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 you know what it is. It's very much like Lisa Frankenstein. For those of you who keep coming back and talking to me about poor things, let me tell you why I don't like a film like Lisa Frankenstein and a film like Poor Things. I do not like films that make me feel icky, for lack of a better word. I don't like films that, as I said, are abhorrent. I want to watch a film that has a sense of glee to it rather than a sense of abnormality. And with both Lisa Frankenstein and Poor Things, you're talking about a film that is going to resonate with weird people not normal you you cannot be a normal well adjusted person and think poor things is funny you cannot think it is a great film and same with lisa frankenstein if you think that watching a dude in bed get his cock cut off with an axe is funny i i don't we are never going to jive on a harmonious level at all. We're ne- I'm not going to ever get to you where you are. The same reason I don't watch films like Human Centipede, Hostel. I love a good horror film, but I don't. And we've talked about this with what's his ass, the, the X rated film, right? We've talked about that with, oh my God, Clown, Art the Clown. When you look at that film, it it veers into the anti-humanity side of things. And once we get to that, I don't like feeling that way in film, and I will forever reject a film like that. Now, I'm going back to Art the Clown. As a character, I've told you guys, I love the idea. I understand. I lo- Listen, I watch Friday 13th. I've seen every Halloween. I've seen every manner of slasher film. But when you look at at terrifier it crosses the line in indecency and now i sound like somebody back like in the old days uh, ban it slap an x on it well and it is x-rated i mean the violence that happens in that film is beyond the norm beyond the pale it goes too far for me it's anti-humanity and a film like poor things no question in a film like lisa frankenstein yes and hollywood gets a lot of shit for having a bunch of weirdos inhabiting its ecosystem. And I'm here to tell you, when you watch films like Poor Things and Lisa Frankenstein, it's confirmed that that ecosystem is full of people who are abnormal, and I don't want to be in their spheres. I don't think I could say it any more perfectly than what I just said. That is exactly my thoughts on those kind of films. And, you know, listen, the reality is this. I don't have to see every movie. I don't have to agree with every film. I try and I always am objective with the film when I walk into it. But ultimately, if it's going to be repugnant, I am not going to enjoy my experience. And all of those films are that to me. It's a subject that's come up on the show several times. Some of the modern filmmakers seem to have a weird hatred towards humanity. Johnny, that's it. You know, that's the thing that I think is the most alarming thing to me is when you think about a film like A Poor Things, uh, Lisa Frankenstein, and Terrifier, I don't want to watch humor derived from suffering. Okay, That's not funny. That's not funny to watch a guy get his cock cut off and then... But here, here's the problem with that, too. When you go back and watch Lisa Frankenstein, you'll see. I, I, I do not recommend you see the film. But when that whole act is happening, they have like an old 80s like R&B song. I don't remember which one they used, but they're because I was so like traumatized watching this. Like, because here's why I was traumatized. I'm watching it as they're playing this like like old 80s song. It's in slow mo. Blood's flying around. He's hacking at the guy's dick with the axe. And I'm like, this is from someone who hates humanity. 
you cannot, this is not from somebody who is, and I listen, I'm not even, listen, I grew up Catholic. I am not church going Eric. I don't go to church every weekend. I go to Christmas mass. That's it. I went to a Catholic high school, but I'm by no means a Bible thumper. Do I believe in God? Yes. Do I believe in an afterlife? Yes. Do I believe in a higher power? Yes. All these things, whatever those things are. So I have, you know, listen, people come after me all the time. They drag me. You're mean. You're this and that, but I'm not anti-humanity. Okay. That's the thing. If, you know, writing a script right now, if I write my script, I can promise you this, it's going to be a hopeful film about humanity. It might be grounded, it might be dark, it might be depressing, but it'll still be grounded to have at least humanity strewn in there. It'll be sewn into the, woven into that film. These films don't have the humanity. And the fact that so many people don't seem to care makes me wonder what happened. When did you lose your humanity when you watch a poor things and think that's funny? And I'm serious. I'm not even kidding here, guys. This isn't a joke. I feel like a a pastor right now. When you watch Lisa Frankenstein, how do you think that that's funny? Because it's not, it's not, it's objectively not. And if you think that that is the height of humor, you need to look deep into your very existence, your soul. You really do. I mean this. I I mean, I'm not kidding. You're something wrong. There's something fa- fundamentally wrong with you, and you need to reevaluate that and, and maybe think about changing some things in your lives. I, I can't believe I feel like I'm up here like preaching, but it's true. It's, it's alarming to me how many people seem to not have any care for their fellow man. And we drag people on here all the time for shell of the week or whack take or whatever. And I called Austin Burke out the other night for being milk toast. I didn't say he's a terrible person. I say he's boring. I say be more interesting. Say things that you are unsafe saying. Don't, I didn't say go up to someone randomly and punch them in the face. You say, you guys, th- that's the thing we've got to understand. I'm allowed to be critical and maybe harsh and still not be anti-humanity. Watch the video the other day of a guy who's in Paris, right? This woman is walking in front of the subway entrance and this dude's on a cell phone and he walks by her and she's not paying attention. She's in front of the subway and she's doing her thing. The dude goes back and shoves her as hard as possible. And she goes down the stairs. Thank God she grabbed the railing because she would have wiped out and broken her. Every bone, every her face would have been fractured. She grabbed her bone and was like going down the stairs, like trying to correct herself. That son of a bitch who shoved her, I'm telling you right now, if I had my way in society, I'm not even kidding you. This is this is the truth. I would grab that dude and we would have some crazy shit happening on the town square. I'm talking about, dude, I'm going back to the savage old days. And yes, anti-humanity, because guess what? You're going to be anti-humanity like that. Then guess what? We're going to be medieval on your ass right now. That's the problem. We have so many people that are just have no respect for anybody anymore. I can't believe I'm doing this stream now. I started talking about Matt Webb. Damn. And now we're talking about (laughs) anti-humanity. Well, because, well, that's, Bodie, here's the thing. The reason that I, that I, that that film affected me at the level it did when you talk about the zone of interest, hopefully you guys have a chance to see it, is because it shines a light on humanity's ability to turn a blind eye to acts of horrific action, right? When you look at being living next to Auschwitz while people are getting slaughtered and you're going about your life worried about what's for dinner. That's not, that's, first of all, and not only that, Bodie, did they ever once show that? Yes, it's all in the head, but the point is the Holocaust was real. So what you, you're missing it. You're just, there's something, I know Bodie, you come on here a lot. I I don't mind taking your stuff, but you, you're missing, like you just, you just went right over you again. You just got you right over your head, right over your head. Um, I mean, that's, yeah, thanks. I mean, the re the reality is, is just that it it's, it's, um, it's it's troubling. It is. It's troubling that that we have so many people that have just lost their humanity at the end of the day. It just it's it never it's not going to sit right with me. And whether you're religious or not, I, that's not the point. The point is, are you anti-humanity? Uh, okay, let's go. <laughs> 
This stream is wild. I don't know what to tell you. I was only going to do like 30 minutes. We'll go a little bit longer. I'm going to be out here because I, I didn't even want to do a stream. No, I did. I did want to stream because I saw the movie. Let's talk about Fantastic Four. And uh, any uh, Super Chats get in, uh, we'll go another like 10 minutes and I'll probably roll. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Fantastic Four cast revealed. You guys are going to have to help me out here. Obviously, I know Pedro Pascal. He's in. Vanessa Kirby, I'm familiar with her work, clearly. Uh, Ebon Moss Bachrach, Bachrach, uh I've seen him only in No Hard Feelings, which uh, wasn't good. He's in that movie. I don't think I've seen him in anything else. I don't watch The Bear. What, I, what else would I see him in? And then I don't know who Joseph Quinn is. Let me just go through this article because I'm trying to figure out who this Joseph Quinn dude is. So anyhow, they're, they're the four. Here's the reality. Can I just say this about Fantastic Four? I'm just not that excited, man. Is that okay? Am I allowed not to be that excited for ta- Fantastic Four? We had the last iteration back in, what, 2015? Josh Trank. I didn't think it was the worst movie. I didn't hate that movie. I don't think it's great, but I definitely think it's ne- not the worst CBM ever made. Um, but I just, I don't get that excited for this Marvel movies. I mean, I'm excited to see Deadpool. I can't wait to see Joker, DC, obviously, but it's not really a DC movie. I want to see artistic takes on films. So when I watch Fantastic Four, which is apparently being written by the Avatar Way of Water scribe, oh, fuck. Guys, come on. I don't ever want to see another Avatar movie again. They're terrible. You know, can I talk about Avatar for a minute? Since I just want to, since I'm weaving all over the place here tonight, I have this weird feeling. You know, we talk about predictive programming all the time, right? So it feels weird how Avatar, especially Avatar 2, was a movie that nobody talked about. It made like almost, what did it make? Two billion or close to it. Nobody talked about Avatar 2 because it's not a great movie. It's incredibly boring. I have to sit through two or three or four more Avatars? I don't think so. Why are they pushing this idea of everyone connected in some kind of metaverse? That's what the film is, right? That's what this film is. Because if you look into a lot of this technology they're trying to do, look what they're doing with that Apple Vision. Pro, we're going to get you to strap this thing on your face and you won't ever leave the house. I got news for you, bitches. I'm going to leave the fucking house. You guys aren't going to stop me. So good luck to, to you trying to get me to live in the metaverse. I don't live in the metaverse. I live in this universe, this one here, real life. And, you know, I'm tired of, I don't want to watch a movie like Avatar where you get sucked into some alternate reality and become some kind of other creature and you're living in another exist that's fine. I don't want to live that shit. That's not what I That's not entertainment to me. Entertainment to me is going out and interacting with the world, seeing things that get you inspired, things that make you a better person, give back, try to do something interesting, experience things, get out, travel, not strap some shit on your face and look at this alternate reality bullshit metaverse. I don't have any interest. Back to Fantastic Four. It's written by the guy who wrote. <laughs> it's written by the guy who, who wrote that. I don't want to see this movie. I, I mean, I'm just. Not, are you guys excited for this film? I mean, the casting's whatever. Pedro Pascal's not. Can I say this too? Pedro Pascal's not a sex symbol. Pedro Pascal. If Pedro Pascal was a regular dude working at a bank, you all wouldn't even look at him twice. You all be like, "Who's that guy? He's kind of weird looking." In fact, I might even say he's a little bit ugly. Like, Pedro Pascal's, I mean, he's, come on, guys. He's kind of weird looking. He's not a sex symbol. And I have to hear all the time on films with all Pedro Pascal. What? What are you looking at? He's not, Pedro Pascal is not George Clooney, right? I get, George Clooney's an attractive dude. Brad Pitt, right? When you look at Michael B. Jordan, these are good looking people. When you look at Pedro Pascal, he's kind of weird looking. Who is that dude? Like when I first saw, even in even in Wonder Woman eighty four, you look at him like this guy's weird. He doesn't. He's like if you think now, listen. If you're gonna tell me strange looking's attractive, then fine. But don't tell me he's like a traditional good looking dude. He's not. He's not. He's not even in shape either. Pedro Pascal's like kind of like girly arm dude. He's. I'm sorry. I'm gonna trash the guy. He might be a good actor, but I'm just saying. Why am I being told Pedro Pascal is a sex symbol? He's not. How? How? Because he's quirky? Because he's a good actor? Because he's a fatherly figure? Because he played the Mandalorian? That doesn't make him attractive. I'm telling you, you're attracted to him because he's an actor. Because he's famous. Who gives a shit? If he worked at a bank, if he worked at the local parks and rec office, and he was the guy who booked the basketball court. You guys are like, who's this dude? That's Pedro. Yeah, whatever. Pedro, go over there. We don't care. You wouldn't even look at him twice, but yet I'm being told he's so attractive. 
uh, Adam Drivers. No, here, here, let me tell you. Here's why Adam Driver I get. At first, I will agree with you. Adam Driver at first is weird. When I first saw him on, what was the name of the show on HBO with the, the girls? Girls. <laughs> What's the show that's on HBO called Girls? Girls. I saw him and I go, that guy's ugly. Like, no, I mean, for your first reaction, this, this, listen, let's be honest. Your first reaction to Adam Driver is not a good looking guy. He's got a big nose. He's, he's gangly looking. He's, he looks kind of weird. He looks kind of like a skeleton at times. And, but then he grows on you. But let me tell you how I understand the Adam Driver thing. When I met at, well, I didn't meet him. I saw him. When I saw Adam Driver in person, he's about, he's tall. So he's, he's got this height, right? So right off the bat, you got the stature, he's got the flowing hair and I go, I get it now. I see it. And once you see him in some movies, but I mean, yes, traditionally Adam driver, not a good looking guy. Also not a, not a, not the kind that you traditionally think. I know we've changed all manner of what is considered attractive. Now, when we say it all, oh, here it comes when, when we say like Lizzo's okay to be, you know, obese. Cause she is, she's obese. Okay. But it's okay. And we can say she's attractive. That's fine. We can say that, but I'm just telling you for me, for me, my ideal is definitely more of, of, you know, a more shapely figure, normal. What (laughs) you know what I'm saying? But now we have these different, when I grew up in the eighties, guys, this is a Gen X thing. We had pictures of these, whether they were dudes or women, we had I had pictures of pro wrestlers. I told you guys this, Kerry Von Erich. First of all, Kerry Von Erich, if you go back and you look at physically, Kerry Von Erich has one of the best physiques in the history of the world. I mean, let me just pull up. If we, I, I know this is what happens. We start I, Fantastic Four is boring. I'm, I don't want to talk about something else. Um, let's see. Everyone else has probably been talking about Fantastic Four for like an hour and a half, right? This channel's like, I don't care. Because you guys know I don't care about the views. I don't care about any of this shit. I just come on here and just start riffing on shit. Okay, let's look at Kerry Von Erich. And first of all, when I pop this up, the one thing I want to I want to mention here is that Kerry Von Erich has an amazing chest. I mean, for not who's that? Is that a Von Erich? Okay, these are all the Von Erichs. Let me see if I can find a good picture of Kerry Von Erich. Okay, here this is this is a good one with him and Jerry Lawler. Let me hit this. Okay, can you see that in the corner? So on the court, Kerry Von Eric, the Texas Tornado, the Modern Day Warrior. The one problem I had with Iron Claw, and I really like the film. I think it's very good. Those of you who finally had a chance to see it in the UK, I'm so happy because it really deserved to be at least in contention for Oscar consideration. It never was because for whatever reason, A24 released it late. Uh, you know, Zac Efron was never going to get in in that crowded actor field, whatever it may be. Okay, so. When you look at Carrie Von Eric in that film, when you look at um, White, he's just not, he's short. And Carrie Von Eric was like 6'4. And we've talked about this before when I talked about Iron Claw. That's my number one problem with the film. Physically, White is not the embodiment of Carrie Von Eric. I think he looks like him facially. I think he got himself pumped up pretty decently, but he's like a little dude. Like he's short. And Kerry Von Eric was unbelievable. Like when you look at that guy's physique, he was un- just off the off the charts. He's he, literally one of the best you'll ever see. So that was my problem. But 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 that was what we grew up with. We grew up with okay, so listen. So this was the standard, right? This was the standard. This was what we grew up with in the 80s to look like this. Now, I understand it's not quite like that anymore, right? Every time I go to the gym, I see kids in there and they, they take off their shirts and start flexing. They look like Timothy Chalamet, like, you know, a buck 10 skinny. And I'm like, why are you guys taking your shirts off? Back in the 80s, we would have put our, our shirts on. We had to look like Schwarzenegger. We had to look like Stallone. We had to look like Jeff Speakman. By the way, if anybody got the Jeff Speakman thing right now, I want multiple likes. If anybody got Jeff Speakman, I want some love. We had we had Dolph Lundgren. We had John Claude Van Damme. These were all Jack dudes. So now, ex- well, exactly, exactly. This is it. Now people get triggered over models. Listen, here's the thing. Exactly, they're not supposed to look like. Here's the deal, guys. Is as you guys know, I go to the gym. I'm not I, I, just because every time I do this, someone has to, someone goes whatever and says, you know, you talk a bunch of shit. Here's the only reason I'm doing this. The only reason I'm doing this right now is to let you know that I can talk this shit. That's why I do it. That's why I'm doing it right now. I'm not going to do it long. That's it. That's all you get. The reason I do that is so that you understand I can talk this shit and walk the walk and talk the talk. 
There are unrealistic standards, but guess what? When you apply yourself and you bust your ass, you can actually get there. Do you see? Why would you just say that's unrealistic? I can't do it. Why wouldn't you at least attempt? Why would you hold yourself to a low standard when you could ask yourself to be more? I don't understand the thinking. It's antithetical to what how I exist every day. I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to rise. I'm trying to get up on anything. I want to get better. I want to improve. Go back to Tony Robbins. I listened to him all the time when I was younger. Can I? Constant and never-ending improvement. This dream definitely is not that. This dream has been flatline crap forever. But everything else in my life, you're trying to be better. So why would you not at least shoot for the moon? Because if I would have said back when I was 15 years old and 130 pounds that I could look like that, I would say bullshit. I would be like Adam Project. If you guys haven't seen it, watch it. It's got what's his ass in it, who's Ryan Reynolds is in it, and he's got a moment when he's a kid and he meets himself older and he goes, Oh my god, you have muscles. And he he realizes he can this is gonna be him. The point is, is get yourself into the mindset that it's possible. It's possible that you can do it. Because if you don't have that mindset, you'll never get there. If I would have had that mindset back at 15 years old, 130 pounds, that I would ever look anything like that, I'd say bullshit. And by the way, that is with creatine, glutamine, whey protein, tuna, and canned chicken. And that's it. I don't touch. I have never in my life Bring me a Bible, bring me a polygraph test, ever in my life touched a single drop of any kind of steroid or human growth hormone. Not a single drop. This is possible if you just bust your ass. That's what it's all about. You just got to do it. Rachel, good to have you back. Um, yes, exactly. 100%. No one, listen, and Rachel, th this isn't just about like, you know, you have to, ultimately, this is the truth no matter what, whatever it is, you have to be able to be happy in your skin. And if you're not, it's not going to go well for anything because if you're not confident in who you are, whatever that is, whatever stage you're in, then you're going to be in trouble because everyone's going to realize that you're going to put that off and you're going to send that to the universe and people are going to, you're going to feel it. I've told you the story. If I haven't, I'm going to tell you it a little bit more in depth right now because I feel like I'm flowing. Five, six, seven years ago now, it was 2015. Uh, I've never told the story completely, but I'll tell it as quickly as I can. I used to be a TV news anchor, and I was on in Charlotte. I was on in Boston, Orlando. Hello to everybody who whoever watched me there. And I did morning news. I was like the morning news guy. So I took a job in Orlando, Florida, second time around. And I got there, and I realized it was the biggest mistake of my life. Okay, So when I took the job, I took it. And I said to myself, I got there. I don't know if you guys have ever done this in your life and, and, and come in with comments if you have. Have you ever made a decision in your life and realized quickly thereafter it was the biggest mistake you've ever made? Okay, so that's what happened to me. I got there, I took the job and I go, holy shit, this is wrong for every which reason. I can't believe I just said yes. So I had to quit the job. So when I quit the job, that was the end of the TV news career. It was probably it was a blessing because I, I would never imagine doing that now, talking about COVID and shit all day. I'd be like, nah, you guys know this is how I roll. Ask anyone who ever watched me on local news. I would do shit like this. I would break into stuff like in between like weather talk and be like, oh God, Weber's doing it again. He's freelancing. That's what I do. I freaking freelance all the time. I don't read the teleprompter. Fuck teleprompters. So when I realized I made the bad mistake and I had to quit the job because I go, I, this isn't where I want to be. This is the wrong decision. And, and I already committed to it, but I had no choice because I knew I had to leave. You know, you have to, by the way, this is very important. Be instinctual. You have to listen to yourself and do not, do not ever, ever say no to the voice inside of you. If the voice inside of you says, don't do something, do not do it. Do not do it. I don't care if everyone says do it. If the voice inside, deep inside, your instinct tells you no. You need to say no. But when I when that happened to me, I went into a deep depression. Okay, guys, I'm talking about you wouldn't even know. I couldn't even do this stream. You know, who is this person? But you know how I got back on my feet? 
I started in day one, I started going back inside the gym and I made that kind of the cornerstone. I said, I am going to make this the cornerstone. I'm going to build, 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 and just fight every day. Fight, scratch, claw, build, get back in this game and not be defined by others. I refuse to ever be defined by a job, by anything. I will do the things that I think are beneficial for me to make me happy, not hurting other people, but do things that are good for the world and try to give back. And that's eventually what led me to this space, whatever it is, is because I followed what I believed and I listened to the voice inside that said, this is where you should be. This is what you should be doing. You have to do that. You must do that. And don't ever deny yourself the ability to say no when you know it's the right thing to say. You must do that. You must do that. I'm, I'm living proof of that. So, but when you, when you hit rock bottom as I did, and you somehow managed to claw your way back up to some semblance of normalcy, I promise you this, and this is why no one on film Twitter can figure this shit out. You guys can't stop me. You never will. It'll never happen. So when you reach rock bottom, you don't give a shit about what anyone else has to say because your their opinion of you means nothing. You will define you, not them. So that's why I go so hard. That's why I never apologize. That's why I constantly keep attacking this, that, and the other. Well, these other people don't have the fortitude to do so because they've never been at rock bottom. Try it. You go to rock bottom, you don't give a shit anymore about what other people think, and good luck, Film Twitter. Come for it. Bring it every day. I'll wage war. You'll lose every time. Every fucking time. I promise you that. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It was schizophrenic direction. All right, we're almost up on the hour. That was a wild time. Uh, thank you, Johnny. Um well, no, because listen, the reality is, is that I don't think it's just about film criticism here. It's not, that's not what this is. This is about truths. Ultimately, it's about truths and just saying the reality of situations. I mean, we've done many times on MMT gets freaky. We'll do it Sunday night. I haven't, I can't do it tonight. I'm too tired, uh, but we'll do it. I, I, I believe, and I, and trust me, I, you guys know, I have a really good track record of calling shit. There's some shit coming our way. There's some bad shit coming our way. I don't know what it is, but it's coming. So what I'm going to tell you is this, is be a critical thinker, always, always investigating, always looking into things. If I say a movie's terrible, go see it. Find out for yourself. But I have a feeling you're going to come back and say, yeah, he was right. Yeah, he was right. Because we ultimately have the cornerstone of truth and honesty and objectivity and fearlessness here on MMT. And that's what this will forever be. So I thank you guys for being here. As always, I want to thank you. If I miss a super chat, I will get you on Sunday. I promise. Hit me in the comments and let me know, and I'll get you in on Sunday. We're back here on Sunday. Fun to have a midweek stream. Always a pleasure with you guys. I say have a great rest of the week, and I'll see you back here on Sunday night on MMT. Peace out. Live from LA. See you next time.